All right, so in this lecture, we're going to talk about the Jupiter project. Uh, broadly, Jupiter is a project that creates tools for interactive, exploratory, and collaborative computing. It's made up of three large projects and lots of smaller ones that support those large projects in some way or another. Uh, the oldest and, and kind of most fundamental part of the project are Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, Jupyter Notebooks are browser-based notebooks that allow the combination of rich text, um, plotting features, code, uh, some interactivity. It was inspired by Mathematica Notebooks originally and was originally named the IPython Notebook because the compute engine was uh, a Python or IPython kernel. Um, however, the protocol allowed for the separation of the compute engine and the front end interface. And eventually people began to uh, produce other kernels, including Bash, uh, which is a shell scripting language. Um, R, the programming language R, even now, today, we have C++ kernels, um, many, many other things. So, like it says here on the slide, there's over 40 programming languages supported. The default is Python. I'll show you an example of a Jupyter Notebook. Um, so, again, these are notebook cells that allow us to run code. So for example, uh, we could just type 2 plus 2. Um, again, these are Python code cells, so we can define Python functions. For example, a function that would add two numbers, A and B. And then we could run that function like this. We can also take these code cells and convert them to, uh, say, Markdown. Markdown is a rich, uh, rich text display markup language. So uh, the raw source code for Markdown has some special syntax, like uh, we use a pound sign for headings. And if we were to execute the cell, the, by the way, the way you, sh you uh, execute any cell is by running shift enter, uh, or you could hit run at the top menu bar here. But uh, if you execute those cells, then you get rich text. And again, there's additional markup. So uh, for example, if you want bold text, need to convert this cell to markdown here to get that to show up. You do get some syntax highlighting when it's in its raw form, but of course if we execute the cell then you can see that we get the rich text highlighting. So uh, this is bold. Um, we can get italics with a single asterisk. Um, we can have hyperlinks. Um, So in this, in this case, uh, that would be a, a link to Google. Um, you can have uh, raw links as well. Meaning uh, that it would just display both um, oh, sorry, you, you actually don't need any uh, additional syntax for those kinds of links. Um, and kind of most impressive for science and engineering is that we can have equations using LaTeX syntax, right? So uh, LaTeX syntax. For example, or we can even, you know, just want to for demonstration purposes show that the equations can be quite complicated. So 
So there is a pressure diffusivity equation that uh, describes single phase flow on a porous media with permeability tensor K, viscosity mu, <clears throat> fluid pressure P, uh, compressibility C, and, and density rho. Uh, so this would be familiar to all petroleum engineers. Additionally, we can have uh, plots. So in this case, we're going to use the matplotlib plotting package to create a plot, a very simple plot. So there we can have a plot. Um, we can actually add interactivity to the plot as well. So if we were to uh, basically make this plot a function, Here we've created a function myplot and decorated with the ipy widgets interact function allows us to create a simple interactive plot that we can use in the notebook. And while this is fairly simple, just controlling the amplitude of the sine wave, this function could be anything complex. It could be the solution of a differential equation with some given parameters. Um, it could it could be essentially anything that can be computed in Python, and so allows us a very quick way to uh, create interactive plots within the notebook. So that's just a simple demonstration of Jupyter Notebooks. Additionally, as part of the Jupyter project, we have Jupyter Hub, which is a multi-user version of the notebook. This is often used in businesses, labs, or in education settings. Um, so the Hub handles some kind of authentication. You can use the standard Google or GitHub authentication APIs, uh, and then the hub would launch a essentially a notebook um, server for every single user that has been in, uh, authenticated. The next generation of notebooks is called the Jupyter Lab project. I have an example here. So this is uh, the launcher window that you'll see when you open a fresh instance of Jupyter Lab and allows us to, to here to launch notebooks with different kernels, in this case some Python 3 or Bash kernel, likewise for consoles or terminal windows. Um, you know, several interesting features here, you have a file browser on the side, um, you, can, you can minimize and, and open uh, the file browser, I guess if we, we should create a file you'll see it over there on the side. This is just a standard notebook like I just described, um, but we can actually then uh, create additional, say, uh, text files possibly for, you know, this could be a Python file. Or another interesting feature would be to create a markdown file here. So we've already learned what uh, markdown is. And we can actually open this with a markdown preview and then split the screen. So it allows us to, say, uh, edit some markdown as we've already shown and while we have the raw text on the left we have the rich text on the right uh, so again this could uh, include So, uh, you know, lots of options for splitting the screen in different, different ways. We can have a notebook open. We could have a Python file that then, where we're using the notebook for visualization, but, but actually writing our code in Python. The um, uh, text editor does include syntax highlighting, um, integrations with certain uh, key mappings for common editors like VI, Vim, uh, Emacs. And uh, there's a lot of uh, extensions to uh, Ju both Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebooks that can be used to uh, have additional settings, features, other things. So this is just a high-level overview uh, of the Jupyter project, of course. If you want to try Jupyter for free, there's a website. It's actually uh, try.jupyter.org. Uh, and which allows you to launch the classic notebook or Jupyter Lab 
uh, Jupiter backed with a Julia kernel, uh, an R kernel, a C++ kernel, schema, Ruby. So uh, just as an example, now these notebooks uh, shouldn't be used for really computationally expensive um, or long-running simulations, but they can be used to just uh, quick calculations or to try things off uh, rather quickly. So it's a nice, um, nice feature.